One thing that has always fascinated me is humans, and another is music. But the other day I was thinking, why the hell do humans even like music? It doesn't make any sense. Why do these random annoying sounds when put together all of a sudden become beautiful and comforting, but sad, happy, make you dance? Make you cry, make you smile, make you go to war. And follow. I'm Richard of Even jump around. Why does it elicit so much emotion from humans? So I dove into it learning that music was the first language that humans had over 40,000 years ago. That it also led to an armistice in World War I on Christmas Eve. By the end of the video, you won't just hear music. You'll feel why it's wired into who we are as humans. And the real reasons that your favorite song can change your mood within seconds. By the way, I'm a travel nurse. I love all things humans, health, and just exploring this great vast world. I was a music nerd growing up. I loved music. I thought it was cool. All the cool kids were doing it, trust me. I was in band, I was in choir. Actually, all the way through college, I was in choir. And I took music history, music theory in college as well. I still am a nerd and I love it. Being nerdy is cool. Other than maybe sports and alcohol, nothing brings humans together more than music or tears them apart. Thanks, Coldplay. <laughs> Either they're having an affair or they're just very shy. In all walks of life, every culture has music. Long before humans were speaking words, they were actually making beats with their homies to communicate to each other. Yes, music was our first language, according to evolutionary biologists. These grunts and rhythms were messages to warn or to welcome or to riz up some ladies. You know, humans aren't the fastest, they're not the strongest, they're not the toughest of all the animals, but yet we dominate the world. Why? It's essentially due to our cooperation. We're like supersized ants who cooperate well together. And evolutionary biologists believe that music was a huge reason that we cooperated so well. So our ancestors probably discovered something extraordinary. Rhythm and melodies synchronized brains and it bonds communities. A shared musical experience releases oxytocin, which is the trust hormone, the love hormone. So this fostered cooperation, it built strong bonds. So tribes sang together and danced together because they built these trust in communities, which is of course critical to human evolution. So over thousands of generations, our brain developed a deep affinity for music because it signaled safety, belonging, and strength in numbers. So really, your brain is so addicted to music because even since the caveman days, we were bopping music. I'm curious what a human 40,000 years ago would think of our music today. And I really wanna hear their music. <laughs> I have a feeling theirs were more grunts and rhythm. Follow your dreams. Yeah. Wanna get a mansion, a jacuzzi, a theater. If you were to open your brain when you're listening to music, it activates every single part. The auditory cortex is analyzing the rhythm and tone. Your limbic system is processing emotions. Your motor cortex makes you wanna move and dance, salsa, hit the bachata. Ooh. Your biology is screaming, yeah, baby, this is good, keep on going. And all of this together, your brain is also releasing hormones and neurochemicals. So your brain is like a Christmas tree lighting up. It's even unlocking memories. And that's why some songs feel so nostalgic because it's literally unlocking memories that have been long stored in our brains. What's interesting, as a healthcare worker, I've worked with a lot of people with Alzheimer's and dementia. You can see how music lights them up. You can almost see a window into their past life, just bringing them back when you start singing to them, or if they start hearing a song that they used to know even as a kid, it's like a whole new person is reborn. And it's a really fascinating thing. It almost gives me chills right now just thinking about it. That's because music was our first language as humans, and it's our first memories. It unlocks, just, it's so weird. 
I'm literally getting goosebumps. Anthropologist Claude once said that music is a supreme mystery of human knowledge. The oldest instrument ever found is over 40,000 years old, and it's made from a vulture bone. Uh, they've also found similar flutes and these weird instruments. I remember them saying one was from a mammoth skin or something, and another one was from a cave bear's femur. So they made these flutes over 40,000 years ago. I was thinking about how they used this bone flute back in the day, and I was like, damn, your mom still plays the bone flute. She was playing mine last night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if we spring forward thousands and thousands of years to the trenches of World War I, it's freezing with mud everywhere, gunfire echoing in the distance, dead bodies all over the place. As night began to fall, a sound emerged. German soldiers were singing Silent Night. The British troops recognized the melody, and they started joining in. Old Christmas Eve night, troops from different countries fighting each other started singing together, started singing Silent Night. They hopped out of their trenches and they talked to each other. My name is Jim. My name is Otto. They shook hands, they shared food, shared cigarettes, shared trinkets from their country. They started playing soccer apparently. Now the war most certainly didn't end, but for that one night everybody stopped and they shared music together. For a few hours, music made enemies humans again. Music almost acts as this bridge between worlds. When it comes to attraction and dating, the reason that you find somebody who's good at music attractive generally is because it's almost like a fitness signal in our evolutionary minds. Think of a male bird who's singing these complex melodies to attract their mate. It's almost the same thing with humans. It's a demonstration of skill and intelligence, health and creativity. Humans are really no different than birds. That's why you see girls swooning to TikTok covers. That's why Jay Biebs, when he was a kid, was getting all that attention because it showed that he had skill and creativity, intelligence and health. So yes, music is a sign of health and intelligence and creativity. On top of that, music is actually correlated with higher IQ, yes. Studies show that learning music improves your memory, your IQ, and creativity. Einstein played the violin, Bill Clinton played the sax. So before we discussed how music can light up the centers of your entire brain, and your reward center is dumping out dopamine and serotonin and other neurochemicals, the same ones that you get from food and sex and falling in love. That's why one song can take you back like 10 years in one second. Maybe the first song that you slow dance to, the track you played when you graduated, the playlist you listened to during your first marathon. Music acts as like a bookmark in your head. And when you get goosebumps from music, that's there's actually a term for this, it's called frisson. It happens when your brain predicts what's coming, but the music delays it or changes it unexpectedly. And we found that music is literally medicine. Music therapy is used in hospitals. Another quite obvious thing that music does is it helps with performance. That's why before big games, athletes are listening to music. Why when you're running, it's a lot easier to run fast and well when you have a good song playing and the vibes are right. Music is a performance enhancing drug. I was trying to figure out why this is and apparently music helps lower perceived effort. I'm not sure if it's almost acting as a distraction from the physical effort. Like you're soothing yourself, you're making yourself feel better. The steady rhythm and cadence you see used in military all the time. Why? Because A, it helps lower perceived exertion like we just talked about in performance enhancement. But also, as we talked about earlier, with the community and tribalism, it keeps you together as one unit, a cohesive group. One thing that really fascinates me is why this song? Why do I like this song, but somebody else might not like it. The music you like is almost like a fingerprint, right? You have such a unique fingerprint and every human also has this unique fingerprint of musical identity. A map of your life, your emotions, your desires, your fears, your feelings. You know that one song that reminds you of high school, the one that got you through heartbreak. I can remember days working an old job and working with one of the best guys I know. He's such a funny and great dude. And we're singing Blink-182, Miss You, at the top of our lungs. Where are you? It was such a great memory. And every time I hear that song, I think about him. I think about that moment. It was just so fun. When I think about college, I think about singing Mr. Brightside. It was like one of the last songs played every night at every bar ever. And just going crazy with all my friends. Coming out of the cage, and I'm doing just fine. Music has such a pull on emotions 
in storytelling, think about your favorite movie, the music behind it makes the scene. It changes so much. A YouTube video even, movies and shows. It's because it elicits so much different emotions from us. This was fun exploring music. I think music is still something that we don't really understand yet. When I'm looking into this, I'm like, I, it, this doesn't close the loop enough for me, but it's fun to explore. I freaking love music. I love humanity and I love learning about things. What should we learn about next, guys? And please tell me your favorite song right now or your favorite song of all time. I can think of a lot of songs that I just absolutely have loved throughout the years and i still go back to all the time freaking sweater weather from the neighborhood such a banger so many old drake songs anyways make sure you subscribe brother peace out lights will guide you home and ignite